This countdown is fire. Yo, what's up everybody? This is Junior Chicken here. As you know, I am a big fan of Pokemon. And now I'm finally getting around to making a top 10 countdown for every single type. Starting with the fire type. Fire type moves are usually based off of combustion, harnessing flames, or even the use of magma and lava. The three main weaknesses of the fire type are water, ground, and rock. On top of that, fire type moves don't do much to dragons. However, fire types do have a great advantage when going up against grass, ice, bug, and steel type Pokemon. They are also strong against fairy attacks. Fire types are usually fairly interesting Pokemon to me. And here, I will be presenting the top 10 fire type Pokemon that I find the most interesting, whether it's because of their stat distributions, abilities, diverse move pools, and even design and Pokedex entries can play a big part, as well as my personal experience with particular Pokemon. Now let me put a few ground rules out of the way that will apply to this countdown and the rest that are about to follow. First, only fully evolved Pokemon are allowed on the countdown, even if they gain the type once they reach their final form. Second, I will not be including Mega Evolutions, but other forms may also play a bit of a factor. But with all those rules out of the way, let's get to it with my top 10 favorite fire type Pokemon. Yeah, Magmar may have been a pretty cool Pokemon back in the first generation. But with one glaring visual aspect. Thankfully, we got an upgrade in the fourth generation with Magmortar. Magmortar has more of a monstery feel to it, with more flames on its body and cannons for arms. That's pretty sick. It's also got a 540 base stat total, which is nothing to laugh at. It's got high special attack at 125, but it does have a pretty weak physical defense. But I guess that's what Flame Body is for, so you can burn those that try to contact you so they can't attack as hard. Besides the regular stuff like Lava Plume and Fire Blast, it's got some pretty cool type coverage that can take on its weaknesses such as Focus Blast, Thunderbolt, Solar Beam, and Psychic. Sadly, the reason why Meg Mortar is at the bottom of this list is its complicated evolution process. You only get Meg Mortar if you trade Megmar holding a Megmorizer. I'm not a big fan of the whole trading to get your evolution, but Magmortar is still a pretty awesome flaming beast. But damn, Tentacurl, I feel bad for you. You had to take two of those in one battle? Goddamn. That's right, Shofu fans. Number nine is Darmanitan. With 140 attack, it's one of the hardest hitting fire type Pokemon from the Unova region only being beaten out by Chandelure. With Darmanitan, you got two routes that you can go, really. With the sheer force ability, every fire type move's chance to burn will be replaced with more power. You can completely wreck the competition with Flare Blitz, but you've also got decent type coverage with fighting, ground, rock, and dark type moves. On the other hand, there's Zen Mode ability where if you go below half HP, you'll enter Zen Mode, which completely swaps your attack and special attack, boosts your defenses to a pretty high count, and lowers your speed and gives you the Psychic typing. With this, you got a smaller move pool to play with, but still some pretty decent moves that you can use for type coverage and stab. I can't really put Darmanitan any higher since Zen Mode is a little gimmicky, but all that power behind Darmanitan is just too good to not put on the list. Come to think of it, Embor and Darmantim have some pretty similar traits. Both are hefty, both of them have hair to represent some sort of facial hair, and both are pretty beefy hard hitters. You can expect to see a lot of these starter Pokemon within the first three countdowns. They're pretty iconic being the first Pokemon you get in every single game, 
and they do have some pretty good stat totals and distributions. With high HP, attack, and special attack, it's got more versatility than Darmanitan at the cost of being slower. I also like how his hidden ability completely changes from thick fat to reckless. So instead of resisting moves that you're already strong against, you can power up moves like Flare Blitz, Head Smash, Wild Charge, and Takedown. He's got some pretty crazy attacks such as Poison Jab, Grass Knot, Solar Beam, Gyro Ball, even Scald. Yeah, he learns a water type move. Do you know how rare that is? Yeah, and Boar might not get a lot of love, but it isn't afraid to fry his enemies into bacon if they cross him the wrong way. Also expect a lot of puns in these countdowns. Hope you're happy, Jaywitz. Camerupt is kind of a weird Pokemon when you consider how much its tone changes from its pre-evolution Numel. So much that its abilities completely change upon evolving. As you can expect from a camel, his speed is only 40, which is pretty damn slow, but Camerupt does have an attack and special attack stat of 100 and 105, so you do have some nice versatility whether you want to go for physical or special attacks with this guy. The fire ground typing is also pretty unique. You don't have to worry about rock attacks, but you have a crippling weakness to water. Thankfully, there is the solid rock ability, which can tone down the weaknesses a bit. Besides having some pretty good fire, ground, and rock attacks, You've also got Solar Beam for covering your weaknesses, and a few steel moves like Iron Head and Flash Cannon. Yeah, Camera Up might be a bit weird, but behind it is a powerhouse that should not be taken lightly. If Camera Up is a weird Pokemon, then Heatran is ridiculous. If you watch my legendary captures, you know why Heatran's on here. What the fuck? I caught this with a Pokeball! Crazy capturing luck aside, Heatran is pretty damn awesome. Its high defenses and special attack mean that it's the most durable Pokemon on this list, but it also hits back with some pretty strong power. Its fire and steel typing is pretty unique too. Unfortunately, this means it's weak to fighting type attacks rather than rocks, and its ground type weakness is increased to four times damage. Still, its ability flash fire is pretty awesome. Basically, any fire attacks that are aimed at it will just increase its power rather than damage it. And it's got a wide range of fire type special attacks, including its signature Magma Storm, which hits for more power than Fire Blast and traps the enemy if they get hit by it, whittling away at their health each turn. It's also got moves like Earth Power, Solar Beam, Flash Cannon, Dragon Pulse, and it even gained Dark Pulse in the sixth generation. Heatran, you may not have been the first legendary Pokemon that I caught, but you definitely felt like it. You guys like to rip on Charizard just because of his four-time weakness, the Sneaky Pebbles, yet you got Talonflame in Generation 6 with weaker attack stats and a worse physical defense, and yet you guys say he's overpowered just because of his stupid Gale Wings ability and high speed. Let me ask you something. What is that going to do against a highly durable rock type? Nothing. Trust me when I say that my love for Charizard is based on more than just nostalgia. If you're going to be hating on Charizard for petty reasons, such as its height in the Pokedex or its dual typing, seriously, learn yourself. Charizard has great special attack and speed making it a pretty good sweeper. On top of that, its hidden ability solar power means that it's practically on life orb when the sun is out. Charizard can learn a wide range of fire attacks. It's also got the special flying type attack, Air Slash, which can screw over enemies if they're slower than Charizard. Did I also mention that it can learn solar beam and focus blast? Those two answer the question of what can it do against the highly durable rock type. You can also breed Charizard to get Dragon Pulse, and you can teach it through Move Tutor, Blast Burn. You can make the argument that Moltres does this stuff better, but I personally prefer getting something at the beginning of the game that has the potential to become better with Mega Evolution. But that's just my opinion. I find it interesting that the Pokedex says the species of Arcanine is legendary Pokemon. 
even though Arcanine isn't technically a legendary. But space stat total of 555 cannot be overlooked. It's got high physical attack and special attack, meaning once again it's a very versatile Pokemon. It can get the ability Flash Fire, which boosts fire attacks whenever it's hit by fire, or you can give it the Intimidate ability. This lowers the opponent's attack whenever Arcanine hits the scene. Yeah, I find it hard to believe that Arcanine could run 6,200 miles in a single day with a speed stat of only 95, but I guess that's what extreme speed is for. Other awesome moves that Arcanine can learn include Flare Blitz, Close Combat, and Crunch through Breeding, Wild Charge, Dragon Pulse, Outrage, Iron Head, and Reversal, just to name a few. Yeah, I'd definitely like to have this dog as my guardian. I may have a lot of love for Charizard, but I think we all know who the real best fire flying type is. What can I possibly say about Ho-Oh? It is literally the Phoenix Pokemon, granting eternal happiness to those who find it. How can you look at the 680 base stat total and not be happy that this Pokemon is on your team? Then again, it is the legendary mascot of Pokemon Go. Its lowest stats, defense and speed, are both 90. All of its other stats are great, especially its attack and insanely high special defense. And if you get with the Regenerator ability, it can actually recover health when you withdraw it from battle. Besides having some awesome fire and flying type attacks like Fire Blast and Sky Attack, it's also carrying Earthquake and Earth Power, giving you good options to go up against Electric types. It's got Giga Drain and Solar Beam for Water and Rock types. It can even teach it Zen Headbutt, Signal Beam, Punishment, and a wide range of other attacks. And let's not forget its signature move, Sacred Fire, which Entei stole in 6th gen, but let's go with it for now. Not only is it a physical fire type attack with 100 base power, it also has a 50% chance of inflicting a burn on the target. But let me remind you, there's more to Pokemon than just raw power and high base stat totals, which is why Ho isn't number one. These next two Pokemon are too dear to my heart for me to neglect, so let's move on. Did you really think I was going to leave out my first fully evolved starter? Hell no. I'm glad I had Infernape with me through my journeys in Pokemon Platinum. The fire and fighting types do complement each other pretty well, because you don't have to worry about rock or fairy type attacks too much. And once again, the common theme of versatility carries over. With high special attack, physical attack, and speed, Infernape can become a great physical or special sweeper. It can even be mixed. Even though its move pool does favor the physical side, it is possible. You got awesome fire type attacks like Flare Blitz, Flamethrower, Fire Blast. You got awesome fighting attacks like Close Combat and Power Up Punch. And you got other attacks like Acrobatics, Shadow Claw, U-Turn, and even Grass Knot, allowing for a faster option against those water and ground types. And if you get it with the hidden ability Iron Fist, you can boost punching moves like Fire Punch, Thunder Punch, and the Priority Mock Punch. With this big arsenal of moves, you can definitely make your enemies go bananas with Inferno. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Cop Out Time! Starring your obvious number one pick, Lazykin! I know this is an obvious choice, but how could I not have the first firefighting starter be my favorite fire type Pokemon? And trust me when I say that its design being based off the chicken is just a minor appeal to me. Blaziken is the one that started it all, and even though I don't think he's as overpowered as some people claim he is, I'm definitely not denying the power behind Blaziken. It's got high attack and special attack, giving it versatility, even though its move pool says screw it, you might as well be going all physical. Its hidden ability, Speed Boost, lets it boost the speed every single turn, and if you don't have the right Pokemon to counter it, you're pretty much going to KFC. His Pokedex entries talk about how it leaps 30 story buildings and then you look at his move pool and you can see why people love it so much. With the powerful physical attack moves it has, it can clear pretty much anything that stands in its path. With standard stabs like Flare Blitz, Blaze Kick, High Jump Kick, Sky Uppercut, to moves like Brave Burn, Shadow Claw, Earthquake, Stone Edge, Poison Jab, it may not be the most diverse move pool out there, but it gives Blaziken a ton of options in order to blaze through the opposing team. This is one chicken you do not want to be in a cock fight with. How 
does he manage to hug Rapidash without bursting in a ball of flame?